Here we have that picture, the Hubble gut, 20,000 galaxies. You know, the Bible talks about serving God. In Revelation 22, 3, it says, and there shall be uh, no more curse there in heaven. We have the curse, we see the curse all about us, don't we? But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. In Revelation, throughout the Bible, over 40 times, it says, it talks about serving God, serving God. I think when we get to heaven, we're going to say, Lord, what will you have me to do? You know, when Paul was struck on the road to Damascus, blinded, he got up, and what did he say? Lord, what will you have me to do? I think we're going to get to heaven and say, Lord, what will you have me to do? And we don't know what he's, you know, our eyes haven't seen, our ears haven't heard. We have no idea what God is going to have for you to do. But with a universe like that, do you think he might have some projects for you? I think so. What's your name? Lois. Lois. You know, God might say, Lois, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want you to look through this. And I'm going to give you an assignment here. I, this is your responsibility. You're going to have 20,000 galaxies right there. Uh, Ken Hoban was saying that uh, there's like how many trillion stars for every person on earth? But what if God said, I mean, we don't know what he's going to do, but just let's just try to think about some possibilities. This incredible creator, he could have all kinds of possibilities. Lois, he may say, I want you to be responsible. This is, this, is, this is your little corner of the universe. I want you to go and check that out. Okay? Because the Bible says we're going to serve him. Forty times it talks about serving God. So, our eyes haven't seen, our ears haven't heard. The Bible says, high as the heavens are above the earth, are God's ways above our ways. So, so the Lord says, Lois, do you like to travel? You're going you're gonna to have a trip. You're going to get those miles, those frequent flyer miles like you can't believe. And what if God said to you, I would like you to go out here and, and there's at least 100 billion stars. I would like you to go check out those stars. I would like you to spend six days at each star. Look at the planets around, around each star. But you only have six days. Now, you're going to have to come back. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 66, it's a new heavens and a new earth that I will make will appear before me, declares the Lord, from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, will all mankind come to bow before the Lord, he says. So you go out here and you have 100 billion stars, and I want you to spend six days on each star looking out. Just check this out, okay? This is your corner of the universe. <laughs> and you're going to come back every week, so you're going to get a lot of miles on, okay? If you're going to check out the stars in this one galaxy, it's going to take you about 17 trillion years. Now, you've only got 20,000 galaxies to go. Isaac Isimov, the famous sci-fi writer, says, I do not believe in the afterlife. Therefore, I do not worry about the tortures of hell or even worse, the boredom of heaven. You think there's no boredom. I don't think there's any boredom there. When you see this incredible God we've got. And now they think the universe may not have an end. It may just go on and on and on. What a God we have. What a God we worship. And we can... I don't think it hurts us to stretch our minds a little and say, what could God do? Right? And uh, John 14.2 it says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He's coming back, folks. Jesus is coming back. I really believe that. The Bible tells us so. Do we have a clue when this will be? Has the Bible given us a clues? Some clues? What does it say in Matthew 24, 7? For a nation shall rise against a nation. And you hear of wars and worms of wars. Kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. The Red Cross tells us, famines, that 30,000 people a day die of famine in the world. And, there, and they tell us that there are more deaths in the last 100 years. Wars. Than there have been in all of mankind's history. You see, when you're out there with a knife trying to kill people, you can't do it. Today, you press a button, 100,000 in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you see. More people have died. They said. So the Bible is telling us that in the last days, nations can rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And Daniel 12 says, But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal up the book, even to the time of the end. For many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Your Bible has prophecy. Daniel 2 
talks about Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, Rome, goes right down to the history where we're at today. It's been prophesied, it's been told, and you can go through that and see it happen, what the Bible has predicted this. And now Daniel says that the time of the end, knowledge is going to be increased. Is knowledge increased, folks? Men are going to run to and fro. Are we running to and fro? I get on a plane out of JFK in April, and I'm in nine hours and ten minutes, I'm in Moscow. <laughs> we run to and fro. You see, history travel has been flatlined for 3,000 years. No little change. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, those guys rode on donkeys and horses. Paul Revere, what did he ride on? A horse. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those guys talked with their, communicated with their voice. They didn't have cell phones, right? Paul Revere, what did he do? The midnight cry of Paul Revere, his voice. You see, nothing had happened much in knowledge and travel and communication for thousands and thousands of years. What has happened now? His knowledge increased. <laughs> okay, we went from Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, to the moon in 60 years, folks. The Bible predicted knowledge is going to be increased. Men will run to and fro. His knowledge increased. I got a business card. This is amazing. And tell a paper. My nephew invented this. This got a computer chip on a business card. You break off this little segment here, fold it up, stick it in your flash drive. There is more computer memory here on this business card than took our men to the moon in 69. Is knowledge being increased? You see, the Bible told us at the time of the end, knowledge will be increased and will run to and fro. We can have confidence. Jesus is coming soon. The Bible tells us, love not the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? The Bible tells us to love not the world. What, is, what do you think that means? I have a concern, folks, for this, for the Christian populace. How much of the world do you love? Folks, if you can't get through the weekend without checking out Hollywood, I think that might be loving the world. If you're so involved that you become a fanatic in the sports, we call them sports, sports fans. So I think it'd be good to ask ourselves, how much of the world involves our lives? If, if we are, I think if we are so involved with the world, in Hollywood and sports and, and and pleasures and all of the stuff of the world, that we may find heaven a torture. We may not be comfortable in the holiness of God. How holy was God? If you look at the Old Testament, when all the prophets met God, they were flat on the ground. Manoah says, his wife, we're going to die. He saw an angel, he said, we're going to die. You see, we need to think about the holiness of heaven. And God calls us to holiness. Revelation, Hebrews says there's a holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So, folks, let's not get so involved in the world and love of the world that the love of the Father, the Bible tells us the love of the Father uh, is not in them. 